Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I've got a project that I've been working on, as you can see, and I've said before, I'm working on my garage, so I need a work bench, a woodworking bench, if you will. So I got some lumber from a guy who was tearing down some walls, and I got a bunch of two by fours, so I'm gonna build it out of that. And I want it to be heavy enough that it won't slide when I'm trying to work on it, but I also need it to be compact so that I can fold the legs up under it, set it up against the wall, and get it out of the way because it is my garage. So um, I'll kind of go through, it's gonna be about six feet in length, maybe a little more with a two inch overhang, about three feet deep. And then I want the, the table top to be about three feet off the ground. So I got some plans designed up and I got some, some wood cut. I'll uh, go through and show you that now. All right, so here is my wood that I have cut up. It's, uh, I cut it a little bit long so that I could square the ends, do things like that with it, and uh, kind of for finishing, because it's always a better idea to leave a little bit of length. That way, if you screw something up or you need to fix an end, something like that, then you can always trim a little bit off before you actually make the final cut. So what I've got here is uh, these are going to be the tops. Uh, these two right here are going to be, they're going to go on the ends of the legs when they fold out. So they'll kind of bump up against the frame, which is going to be this stack here. And then uh, I've got the two sides here. And then this, uh, this one here is a going to be a, a support member that goes across between the legs. So, and I may need a couple more. Um, we'll kind of see how it goes from there. Uh, I'm going to take uh, two by fours and glue them together. To make the legs so it'll be two two by fours glued together for each leg so it'll be about a three by three leg and i do have uh some extra two by fours here that uh, are shorter that i can use if it comes down to it and then i do have some spares over there so that's the uh the initial plan i'm going to plane these down to about uh three inches wide by an inch and a half thick and that'll be the uh, the final dimension before I glue them together and start using everything so that's the uh, the setup I've got everything cut like I said just a little bit long so let's start uh, jointing sides and get things uh, squared away so to get started anyone who's not familiar with the shopsmith I'm going to show you a little bit of setup on that uh, should be fairly short I obviously have the a rip blade on or excuse me a, a cross cut blade on here so we don't want that on the headstock because we're going to be connecting the headstock to our jointer. And uh, so we're going to pull that off and I'll sh basically give you a general run through. If you need this side to see what's going on, uh, I can show you that at a later date. But I'm going to get, uh, get that removed and then we're going to hook it up to the jointer. So first thing you do is unlock this, raise your table up, lock it back down, unlock your headstock. Slide that over. And now we have access to this. As you can see here, I do not have it plugged in. Uh, I always leave the, uh, the cables draped over here usually so I can tell whether it's plugged in or not. It's a safety issue of mine. So you just want to make sure it's not plugged in whenever you're, you're doing anything besides actually cutting wood or jointing wood or doing anything like that. So we still have that unlocked. So we got this here. These are Allen stocks on the back end. Unlock that and slide it off. So the headstock connects to your jointer via a, uh, I think it, I believe they call it a power coupler. So it's got uh, arrows on it. I don't know if you can see that. One side says accessory, one side says headstock, and they've got teeth in them. One's got five, one's got four, four is for the headstock. So we'll slide that onto our accessory, and then we can slide our our headstock over to join up with it. Now it looks like this has to become a little bit loose. So we'll take that and we'll tighten that down. It's always a good idea. It's always a good idea to check and make sure that your uh, I don't remember exactly what these are called, but it's always good to make sure these are just held on by uh, an Allen screw. So it's always a good idea to keep checking things like that and make sure that everything's snug down and won't come apart when you're trying to use it. Here we go. 
we'll slide this over and we'll just turn the turn that until I feel it pop into one of the grooves and then we can just slide that the rest of the way in and then we'll lock the headstock down all right so that's joined up we now have uh, the joiner connected so let's move on to the next step okay so I've got a scrap piece of wood here and I'm going to use that to check the uh, the squareness of my fence on the joiner. So I'm going to run this through and make sure that, that the joint, the uh, fence and the NC table are square. So that way we can make sure that we get a nice square cut on this board. Always make sure you have eye protection and ear protection. PPE is important. All right. Plug it in, make sure the switch is off first. And here we go. So once I start it, uh, it's got speed options, so I'll speed the, uh, the headstock up to the mark that says uh, joint. Shop, uh, shop smiths, you want to make sure to spin it all, slow it all the way back down to slow before you shut it off. All right, so we're a little bit off. Looks like I'm going to bring that fence up just a little bit. So to adjust that, I use a small screwdriver. I'm going to put this right here. Yeah, it looks like it is off a little bit. We need to come back. So what I'm going to do, I'll loosen the fence and back this stop screw out just a little bit. All right, we're going to lock it down. Make sure we're still square. Let's give it another swing. surface level the longer boards I probably won't bother running through the jointer um, but the the shorter ones I'll probably run through see if I can get at least one uh, one of these uh, surfaces smooth because some of them have a little bit of a little bit of a cup to them maybe a little bit of a little bit of a bow so we want to get that straightened out so that way we can uh, get a nice even flat surface with uh, with the planer so I'm going to run all these through and get uh, at least one side nice and even. I'm going to move this back so that I can uh, make use of the full width. So I'm going to run those through and uh, get at least one side of them nice and smooth and then we can run them through the, the planer, get them down to thickness and then we can joint uh, one of the side edges and then from there we can fire up the table saw and we can run them through and rip them down to uh, three inches wide after we get them planed down to an inch and a half with the planer. Before I do that, I want to make sure I have enough. Yeah, should be good there.
and there we go. But uh, one swing side on each, and when you do that, uh, if you're not familiar with using a joiner, you want to make sure you have it like the board is cupped like this. You want to make sure that that cup is down, so it takes a little bit off the front end, a little bit off the back end, and it, it evens it out. If you do it the other way around, it's going to have a tendency to rock, and you're going to have a heck of a time getting that, that hill out of there. So we got these. We've got these shorter boards all uh, all planed down smooth on one side, and I'll probably end up planing both sides of them with the planer. I just want to make sure I start with a smooth surface on at least one side. So. Uh, next step, I'm going to run them through the planer, get them all down to an inch and a half thick, and then we'll go from there. We'll probably cut them down to size, and then uh, actually we'll probably end up jointing one side, and then run them through the table saw to rip them down to uh, the three inch width that we want, maybe just a little bit more, so that I can run them through the joiner and make sure they got good surfaces. Because uh, you can't, you can glue wood together with uh, sawn surfaces. But uh, I like to run through a joiner at least just one time just to get uh, any rough edges off of there and the boards just come together a lot better. So that's my preference. So I'm going to get set up and we're going to get the planer set up and then we'll run it through there. I'm doing my, my planing on the floor right now. Obviously I don't have the bench to mount it on yet. So uh, that should be interesting, but we'll get those run through and we'll get them planed down. And then we'll go from there. Okay, so we're set up. Uh, I have to go kitty corner in the garage here because I don't have that much space and some of these boards are fairly long that we're going to be running through. So I want to make sure I have enough space for uh, for both ends for feeding and the, uh, the outlet table. And I will probably end up using, let me grab one here. Probably end up using a scrap piece of two by four. Uh, probably grab one longer than this one actually. To, uh, to put in before and then to one to follow it so that I can uh, cut down on Skype as much as possible. So that way I can run them through and then I'll leave it with one of these and I'll follow one of these, you'll be able to see it. And uh, I think I misspoke earlier. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get them down to one and a half. I may have to go down to one and a quarter because most of your two by fours stock are about an inch and a half thick. So. I'm going to go down to about an inch and a quarter if, uh, if possible. And I will probably end up running them all through and then changing my depth and then running them through again. That way I make sure they're all the same height. Not that it's an issue with, the, with this blend planer because it'll, I can uh, adjust that on the fly. But uh, that keeps me from having to, to uh, run it through, come back around, run it through, and then get everything down. Whereas I can just pick it up, run it through, set it down on the back end, and then just move the whole stack back to the front and then go to uh, the next thickness until I get both sides nice and smooth. So hopefully that's uh, close to an inch and a half, but I don't think it will be. It'll probably end up going down to an inch and a quarter, inch and uh, three eighths, somewhere around there. So I'm going to get started with that. So I'll wrap it up for this session. Uh, got them planed down to an inch and three eighths, which isn't bad. <coughs> so uh, I don't think I'll take them down too much further. I'm not real picky about the uh, the surfaces. Most of them are flat. Some have some hammer mark hammer marks from uh, being knocked out and torn out and so on and so forth. So uh, got them planed down. 
Next episode, we'll get the joiner out and we'll joint one edge so we can run it through the table saw and cut them or uh, rip them down to approximately three inches. Uh, we'll, which we're probably doing a couple cuts, so stay tuned and uh, watch the next video. So thanks for watching. Tune into the next video in the series where uh, we do the jointing on these and hopefully get some gluing done. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button, leave any comments below, any questions, anything like that. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.